Hi, I'm Chris Cravens. Um, a few days ago, Jim Betridge asked me to share something in this group, and I was really hesitant because I am a new metalsmith. Um, I just started sawing last fall and soldering this spring, so I was like, man, I don't have the experience. <laughs> but his point was, hey, there's a lot of other people in our group too that are newer, is there something that you can share? Um, I am an admin for the group. I'm basically do nerdy stuff. So assigning posts to categories and things like that. So I'm behind the scenes mostly. Um, but I am an enamel artist. And so I um, have what Roberta affectionately calls um, bread and butter pieces that are part of my collection that I bring to shows. And um, they're like the super easy to make pieces that might just be enamel with a little bit of wire and we're done right um then i have higher end pieces that i'm making now that are like bezel setting a lot of soldered elements all hand cut things like that so there's a big um gap in prices so i am looking for um a bridge in between and so i've started using tab settings to do that this is a tab setting. Um, it's basically just a piece of sheet metal that you work around um, a cabochon. It can be a square, a circle, a crazy shape. Um, these work really well for things like quartz or um, rough, uh, rough gemstones. You can just build the tabs almost like prongs and um, get them on. This example I've done completely without soldering. So if you have no soldering experience, this is a nice way to just elevate your work a little bit um, and make it unique. So let's get started. So I have a piece of enamel here that I'm getting ready to tab set. I just want to walk you through the process. I like to use just a, a little card stock or piece of paper to sketch out some ideas on. And then because these are going to be quick, quick and dirty, <laughs> uh, jewelry pieces, I actually just sketch right onto the metal when I'm finished. So I'm going to do that here. Um, I've got a little index card. This is a piece of enamel that I fired. Um, it's really pretty, but uh, I don't know, not, not quite worthy of a, a full-blown bezel setting. So I'm going to set this um, on my paper and then uh, just draw around the outside of the cabochon. So I like to use dashed lines for this just so I can keep track of where my stone is going to go versus what I'm going to cut out of the metal. So now that that's finished, I can think more about uh, my setting. Um, I've decided that I'm just gonna make this one super simple and just leave a little piece of metal hanging off the edge of the stone so that it looks like a shadow. One thing I love about tab settings like this is you have so many options for creativity. Like, I could do some kind of elaborate round background back here. I could solder pieces on. I can texture the metal that's going to remain. Um, the possibilities are really endless and only limited by your imagination. So um, there is a basic rule when using tab settings and it's this. Wherever you're going to add your tabs, you just want to make sure that this stone is not going to slide out of the setting at any point. Squares are pretty easy. Um, you can put tabs on four sides. You can even scoot a little closer to the edges, but you just got to remember to offset where the pressure is. I like to, with squares, um, kind of put four points in these two corners. That's enough to keep that stone in place. Round cabochons are also easy. Um, same deal, you can put them equidistant from each other. You can even start to get a little bit closer, but not too close or that thing's going to slide right out. Um, if you're working with a uh, very abstract stone with like edges that are crazy, so let's say that you um, have a piece of quartz that you want to set or a geode, um, you just need to think about that shape and is it locked in well with your tabs. Okay, so let's get started with adding the tabs. 
like I said, I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, so I am just going to add a couple of tabs to the corner here. I'm drawing these in. Um, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up sawing the metal like this and then up and around that tab, around the corner, around this tab, and keep going. Um, this is one way to do tabs. So basically when your stone's down, you don't see the back plate at all. Another way to do them is to actually cut them out of the back plate itself. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those in down here. So let's say I put them in like this. What I'm going to end up doing with these tabs is um, after I'm finished sawing my piece out, I'm going to come back in with a drill and drill a little hole right here, saw this tab on all three sides, leave it connected here because if you cut it here, your tab's gone. Do the same thing with the other one. Then these will fold up and back over the stone. So I'm liking this design. Um, something to keep in mind when you're working with tabs, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff um, with them. So you can make a tab more like a curve so that when it folds over, it lays over the stone like this. You can do two small ones next to each other. After you cut your piece out, you can flip the metal over and texture these tabs so that they have um, you know a striking appearance that's different from what you might see on the metal back plate if you decide to leave that out you can even solder on like you know different types of metal so let's say that this is going to be brass i could solder on little silver elements if i wanted to add some interest to my tabs um if you're looking at this right now and you're thinking man that's awful long because enamel is pretty thin um, yep, it is. <laughs> Not to worry though, after we get um, to the process where we're actually testing the fit, we'll cut these down to where they need to be and uh, finish them off. I just like to cut them a little bit long because you can always remove metal, but it's pretty hard to add it back unless you solder it and we're trying to save time, right? So there's one more thing to think about with, um, with the tab setting and that is for this, this is going to be a pendant. How am I going to do my bail? So I've got a couple of options. I can, you know, go back in and solder a bail onto it. I could even um, leave a little piece right here and punch a hole and um, add a pretty, you know, pinch bail to it. Do something like that. I've decided for this piece, I'm actually going to do a little self bail. So that is essentially another tab. It's just bigger. So. In the next video, I'm going to um, go ahead and transfer this design over to metal, and then we'll get started cutting it out. Okay, so now we are back and um, getting ready to saw. Remember, I had my little um, sketch <laughs> mock-up on the paper, and now I've transferred it over to the brass. Um, I decided to use brass for this, again, for the price point. Um, if you're like me, uh, and you are using Sharpie to draw on a metal, our fingers act like giant erasers. So there's a couple of ways that you can, uh, keep the oil from your fingers from wiping away your artwork. I like to use, uh, gator tape, um, looks like this when it comes in a roll. You just peel it off and then uh, it sticks to itself. So you can make custom size finger cots like I've got right here. Another option um, is to use rubber gloves. Another option is just to draw it back on. Or if you wanna get really crazy, you can scribe your design in. Um, again, quick jewelry, quick processes, right? So anytime you're piercing, um, the first thing you want to do is actually cut the pieces of the interior out first. This just gives you a bigger platform and stability to work from. So what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and prepare these two interior tabs with, uh, with drill holes to insert the saw. So I really love this um, little uh, divot maker. So it is spring-loaded. You just put it on 
press down and it punches a nice little divot. You can also use um, like this, like a nail set so that you can put it in and hammer on the end. I just find this little punch to work really well. I'm gonna go ahead and just punch both of these. I'm only gonna saw one out for the video so I don't bore you to death. So now that that's done, um, you're going to go ahead and drill a hole. Um, I use the smallest size drill bit as I can for my blade. Um, you can figure this out on your own by kind of eyeballing it, testing it in a piece of metal, or you can find a handy gauge online. Um, this one came with my saw. This is a green lion saw, but, um, I know new concepts has one on their site. It basically says, you know, here's a recommended saw blade size, um, the gauge, and then the drill size that you need. So, um, let's get started. So anytime you're drilling, you always want to lubricate your drill. I like Rio Burr Life. Um, it just seems to work really well for me, but you may have something else that you're fond of. So what I'm going to do is just set the drill in the um, little divot that I made and hold it as steady as possible. And then just let the drill do the work. Um, it's tempting to want to push the drill in. Don't do it. <laughs> that is one way to break a blade. Just let it do, let it chew through that metal. All right, so now we have um, the two drill holes made. I'm going to go ahead and get my saw ready um, and we'll cut out a tab. So if you're new to sawing um, and piercing, you want to go ahead and open up, whoops. <laughs> See, this is not where I normally do my saw, but I'm trying to keep it in the video for you. So, uh, you want to run the saw through the hole from the back to the front so that the design is actually up when you're sawing. Then you're going to push this up against the bench and uh, tighten the nut. I am going to take this off the screen because I do not trust <laughs> the stability of that metal on my bench pin to do this job. Um, one of the things that you can do to test to make sure your blade is tight enough is just ping it a little bit and you'll hear, I think they say it's a C sharp or something. <laughs> I don't know. I just listen for the right sound. Um, it's something that you'll start to figure out as you do more sawing. So you definitely want to lube your blade. And because I have this drawn on, I'm going to put my amazingly uh, ugly finger cots on. Gator tape gator tape finger cots they look so gross because they're like all full of silver and stuff but these suckers they work okay so to cut the interior tab out um, what you're gonna do is just run your saw down one side of the tab and go slightly past the edge where this uh, stone is going to be. This allows you some room to bend it up. Then you're gonna back up and go the other way. So now we're gonna go across the top. Don't worry so much about how um, the tab itself looks. We're gonna be cutting off the end of this tab. What really matters is the cleanness um, of the back plate. Then uh, when you're working around a corner, you just keep moving your blade up and down as you go and turn the metal. Long, even strokes down the other side of the tab. And got it ending at the same point. And now you're done. So you unhook your saw and then pull it out. It's kind of hard to see on the front here. So sometimes I like to turn over the back and see how it's looking. Um, when we get closer to finished and I take this plastic off, I'll look at it and make sure that the interior is perfectly clear like after I bend the tab. Um, and I do some cleanup work with the saw at that time.
Okay, so I've cut out the other tab and interior tab, and now it's time to cut around the outside. So this part um, is pretty easy uh, if you're used to sawing. If not, it might be a challenge. So let's go ahead and just walk through the first couple of these. So remember, um, when I'm cutting, I'm going to leave my little metal shadow here on the edge, and then I want to leave all these tabs. So I'm just going to start um, by cutting this one here. So I'm going to begin with a nice downward stroke, and then I like to um, keep my saw blade when I'm cutting straight lines just a little bit at an angle. This looks like maybe a 30 degree angle. Um, helps me cut straighter lines. <laughs> I don't do this for curves, then it's straight up and down for curves. Once I get to where my stone is going to be, I'm going to bring this all perpendicular and then turn it slowly <laughs> as I saw and now I'm ready to go again so saw along where my stone's going to be until I get to this first tab same deal make it perpendicular turn and then saw the tab I wanted to say something too so to me precision is important when making jewelry um, but <laughs> sometimes if you're working on a budget piece or a more, you know, price friendly point, I don't know about you, but my, my time, my labor is what usually ends up costing the most. And so for pieces like these, a lot of times I draw on freehand. But, an option, if that isn't comfortable for you, is to use templates like these. Um, this is an old architecture template. My husband has, oh, I don't know, thousands of these things laying around. So they've come in real handy, but you can buy them on sites like Rio Grande. Um, cool Tools has a bunch of interesting shapes. Um, let me grab one out of here. So this one's kind of neat so this is like a i call it a wonky egg i don't know what they call it misshapen egg maybe um but they're really nice they they have these out there actually for metal clay but they work great for doing drawings on the fly like this so i just wanted to share that with you if you're looking for something i'm going to end this video now and finish cutting out the rest of um, my design and then we'll get into the setting Okay, so now that uh, we're back, I've added a little bit of texture just to my shadow and then um, the two tabs that are going to fold over from the top. I'm leaving these tabs in the bale plain. Um, if you're interested in this texture, all I used was this little um, hammer from Fretz and then just um, on my bench. Uh, block and then use the flat side to just planish it a little bit um, and just smooth it out. So uh, now on to bending the tabs. Finally! Um, I just like to use flat nose pliers. Um, these are just inexpensive pliers. I'm saving up for my auto fries uh, but in the meantime I just use the tools that um, my business is paying for. So um, I don't want to go in debt so here I am <laughs> um, okay so flat nose pliers work really well for for the tabs on the outside um, we're gonna bend them up not all the way almost to maybe an 80 80 ish degree angle um, we're basically just wanting to get them turned up so we can test the fit 
The interior tabs are a little bit trickier. Um, I will sometimes just grab a file, you know, like this, and gently push the tab from the back to get it started, and then use my um, pliers and sort of sneak in there with them and bend the metal. Oh, I forgot to say this. I'll put it in the description. This is um, 24 gauge brass. I wouldn't do anything thicker than this unless you want to hammer set your tabs. Um, I learned this from, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> There's a great video on Blueprint um, all about tab setting. I'm going to put a link to it in the description also. The instructor has some really good ideas for just fun ways to work with tabs. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh yeah, he just talked about different ways to um, move them and set them. He actually recommended 26 gauge metal, but I I just felt like that was a little too thin with this thin piece of uh, enamel. So 24 it is. All right, now comes the moment of truth. Um, I'm going to take my stone and just set it in to look at how it's fitting in the um, in the design, and this is looking good. So it. Um, Already it, it moves just a little bit, but once I fold those tabs over, this thing is going to be locked in well. Um, looking on the back, okay, I do see a little bit of cleanup I need to do on, um, on this one especially. See my drill hole? So I'll come back in with my saw and straighten that out a little bit. Um, okay, this is the point where we are going to go ahead and finish the edges, trim down the prongs, and get it ready for um, its final, final cleanup. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, you can go the old fashioned route and use the files. Um, I like to do that on the interior ones, uh, just to clean up the inside get them looking nice. You can also do it around the outside or um, a 3M rubber wheel. I don't have one in my, <laughs> sorry, I should have replaced that. This is a silicone wheel from 3M. They're impregnated with different grits. Um, and so the white, Richard has a video series on this. You need to watch it. I'll link to it in the con in the description also. But these things are excellent for a quick cleanup. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one thing though, if you're using these, you definitely need a dust mask. Um, there's some nasty stuff in here. You don't want breathing. Okay. So we talked about this. Talked about okay. Trimming them down. Let's talk about that. So. <coughs> This can be a challenge at the beginning as you're getting used to tab settings. I actually made this one and cut them way too short. So they weren't, they just barely folded over the edge like a bezel. So, you know, when you're doing a bezel setting, you just want to go over the little girdle. So just little girdle and you're good to go, right? Not so with these chunky tabs. Um, you need a little bit more muscle. So. I like to um, just grab a piece of my backing material and lay it on my stone like this and then draw a line on the tab. So looking at this, I'll see where my line is and it when I fold this over should snugly put the stone in place. I could be even safer and go a little higher so I'm actually going to do that because this wasn't good. I have a show coming up soon and this is quick jewelry right? <laughs> so I'm actually gonna go up even higher just to make sure 
And then I'll go do the same, about the same height on this side. It's one thing about this too, especially this particular piece of jewelry, is that it looks more organic. So being more organic and not as precise with your measurements can actually be a really good thing for a design like this. Okay, now that they're set, um, I'm going to totally cheat and just use my metal shears because I know this is a thinner gauge. I'm going to be good to go. So I'm just going to find each line and then um, clip the ends of the prongs or uh, tabs off. Okay, something else to think about at this point is making the ends of your tabs more decorative. So obviously I'm going to go and, and clean these up with my files and silicone wheels, but I could make a little curve so I can curve these and make them prettier. Um, I could even, if I wanted to get really crazy, do like a little design in the end. So like make them almost like a double prong or a claw and um, that's something you can do too. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then we'll come back to setting. Okay, at this point um, we have now the setting is completely cut out. Um, the tabs are cut out. I'm turning it over to the back so you can see that a little bit better. And, and it's basically ready now to start adding any kind of embellishments or texturing. Um, it's just easier to work with it when it's flat. But before you do, just make sure that, yep, I think this is still going to work <laughs> with my stone. So I like to just lay it on there and just kind of eyeball it and see like, yep, looks like those tabs are going to fold over just fine. The ones that are inside, I don't know if you can, might be able to see this better on the back. I'm going to see if I can replicate what that would look like. So this is the back of my stone. Um, when I lay it on here, see how the ends of the interior tabs are peeking out just a little bit? That's enough metal to allow me to bend them up and then over. So we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just add um, a little bit of texture to this and then come back and talk about cleanup and preparation for um, getting the setting, getting the tabs bent. Okay, so now um, that I've cleaned up the edges a little bit, I haven't put like the final polish on here, but it's good enough now for me to um, set my cabochon and um, do the bail. So I actually like to work my bail first before I put enamel in. Um, this is glass. If you're not familiar with enamel, this is finely ground vitreous enamel, which is glass fused onto a sheet a piece of copper in a kiln and so it's pretty delicate um, I mean it's a tough material but it can crack under pressure or if you do crazy stuff with it so um, I'm just gonna make my bail really quick uh, here's my little El Cheapo pliers again um, I like to start off by putting a nice angle towards the front for myself bales just so that when I roll them over they they are evenly um, when you look at the piece from the side they're even so it's a little more than a 45 degree angle um, this is my bale making pliers these are just from Wubbers um, you can use half rounds I'm sorry round nose pliers like these but if you're working with these you'll need to turn and then basically turn your pliers the other way and keep working them over. Otherwise, you're going to end up with this metal wanting to conform to the shape here and it will curve your bale off to the side. So I cheat and use these. They're just like a little mini mandrel. That's the other thing. If you have a small mandrel, you can use it to form your bale. So I just grab the end and um, start working it around like this 
And then come in from the back and keep going. So now I have a nice little self bail that um, looks pretty good. It's a little bit off center, so I am going to use these. Just sort of tweak it a little bit and move this back piece over. Even with these, <laughs> see how that's out of alignment? Let me get my little needle nose guys, work on this a little bit. There we go. I'm going to use my flat nose pliers here just for the very end to tuck that in good. You can solder this down. Um, I'm not going to because again, this is like a less expensive piece of jewelry. So it doesn't mean it's any uh, less well made. I mean, I spent time sawing it. I finished the edges. I'm going to go through my whole polishing process, but it's just not... Um, as much as I would do for a bezel setting. Okay, so now that this is on, um, I actually like to lay a little piece of leather down on my bench pin um, to set this. And I put, so this is my little gap here. I actually put my bail there <laughs> so that um, it doesn't get all crazy on me. So now that um, I'm ready to set this, here there we go uh, you can sorry you can use standard bezel setting equipment so like these little bezel pushers here's my gator tape again I like um, to put this on the end so if you're using a bezel pusher you just you know wrap it around if you don't have anything like this you can use the end of your pliers so um, same deal push it around and then with again with the enamel push gently um, I'm gonna switch back over to this just because I'm more comfortable using these now okay make sure that that guy's still good Okay, this one, push down just a little bit more, and just like a bezel, you know, you can check and just make sure the edges all look good. And so now, um, I'm going to go polish this, oh, one thing, if you wanted to put a patina or anything like that on, I would do it before you um, set your stone, just like you would if you're bezel setting. Um, you don't want to get that crud all over your stone. So you would work it to the point of doing the patina set, do a little bit of cleanup, and then finish your, you know, your polishing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> One thing I just noticed too, I forgot to take off my marker. <laughs> so um, you can use uh, like ammonia. I actually have Xerox down here or um, xylene, sorry. I have xylene. Um, my husband's a woodworker, so I just use it and put it on a little Q-tip and wipe that off like an eraser. Uh, anyway, that is it. Tab setting for beginners. I'll include a picture of the finished product so you can see it. Thanks. Bye.